Hello everyone and welcome back to a new uh, typography video. Today we're going to be looking at how to create this fungi typography uh, with the strange looking fisheye lens uh, which will give your uh, typography a bit of a retro feel. Um, so yeah we're going to be including some new ways of sculpting in this tutorial which is going uh, uh, from my previous work and uh, yeah we're just basically going to talk through the steps on how to do this. This also starts from a illustrator file and uh, it will also uh, see so yeah, I basically started in Procreate as a sketch which I'll show you guys in a second and um, yeah we basically took it through from Illustrator into Blender and uh, yeah played around with it with a sculpting. Um, I just want to shout out quickly the um, community discord server in which we've been creating. Uh, this is open to any creatives, anyone that's involved or enjoying creative creating work. Um, this is for people to share content, learn together and just basically connect with other people who are interested in the same field. So uh, that will be in the description below. And uh, yeah, let's get straight into the video. Okay guys, so this is where we're going to start. We're going to start in Illustrator and this is drawn straight from a PSD file. Just import it straight into uh, Illustrator by just dragging and dropping it straight in. So this was just a quick sketch in which I did um, the other day. And I'm just going to go to image trace and then go down to where it says silhouettes and I just want to click OK. And this is basically going to create my outlines. Uh, I'm going to click expand. I'm going to click ungroup because we want to work on each piece of type. And basically from here we're going to go to file, export, export as and then you want to save it as an SVG. That's really important for you to, to get locked down. Um, I'm going to start um, talking about this process soon um, because I have to kind of repeat it in each tutorial so I'm going to start um, directing people back to other tutorials um, so yeah this will be the last time I'll be mentioning it in the in my videos okay so I have opened up a brand new blender file and deleted everything and what I've done is imported the SVG so I've gone to file import scalable vector graphics SVG and that'll import the graphic really small into, into the scene we're going to press S on the keyboard when everything's selected and scale it up. We're then also going to make sure that all these have come through correctly. And these will come through as curves. If you press tab, you can see all the little uh, vertices slash curves uh, tool pieces um, in which you can grab and move around if you feel like nothing, if you feel like you need to change anything. Um, so what we're going to do as well, I'm going to select all of these. I'm going to go down to the material section. I'm just going to press minus and then click new and I'm going to press Control L and I'm going to link materials and that is basically going to link all the materials to whatever I change this material to all of them will change and it's just a nice fresh start um, I'm also going to go to each letter and click object set origin to geometry and I'm going to do this for all of these uh, objects because we want to work in these in separately so uh, origin, origin, uh, sorry um, origin to geometry and then we are going to go down to the um, object data properties which is the little green line here and um, we're going to go to geometry and we're just going to extrude these by different points so once again I'm just going to tap maybe one here maybe this one goes up by two and the first one goes up by one just add a bit of variation okay guys so once everything has been uh, created like this we're then going to click one of the objects and we're going to object convert to mesh and as you press tab you can see that the mesh is really terrible and it's not going to be easy to work with so we need to remesh this so we're going to click add modifier go down to remesh and we're going to use uh, lower the voxel size to something around 0 0.0006 or 5 that's about right okay and we're going to go and do that to all of them so i'll just skip forward and uh, come back when everything's been repeated on each one okay so we are back and everything has now been uh, made into an object it's uh, into a mesh sorry and it's also been remeshed and the remesh has been applied and now we're going to go into the fun stuff which is the sculpting so we're going to click object we're going to go set origin uh, geometry make sure that that's right and we're going to go then to sculpt mode and the main tool we're going to be using uh, just quickly here is the smooth tool I'm going to press the squared brackets to increase my brush size and I'm also going to increase the strength by a bit just for this tutorial but I do recommend spending a, a longer period of time on smoothing out all these areas um, so I'm just going to do this quickly for the video's purpose 
uh, looking to make sure everything has really nice lines looking good we can also use the grab tool to morph and move around i'm also considering what this letter could be like so where i'm going to put this through so i almost want to make a little gap for where this would sit and this is going to be a big part of how that type looks so this actually goes into how the way in which the um the intro was made so for this type it's important about how you line things up if we come out of sculpt mode and we press grab the next type you can then kind of see that we need to look for areas in which we can position the type to fit together and that will give it that effect um, so we'll go back to sculpt mode and keep dragging areas around um, and yeah we're also going to show you i'll show you also how to make them um, extreme i don't know what they're called to be honest them like big pieces on the top of each corner and the brush that i used to create that was this layer tool and if i um, keep the radius about there and the strength and then just press these I might drop the strength a bit and you can see it gives a really nice uh, little layer of um, detail um, which is quite stylized um, but it, it will add a nice like change to your type and uh, yeah you can keep applying it depending on how much you want and as you can see adds a, a great little layer of, of interest especially when you start layering up the others so um, yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip the video forward and I'm going to take it straight through to the final um, final piece and um, yeah, we'll start talking through about how things were layered together um, in just a second. So let's skip straight to that. So this is the final piece that I came across. As you can see, each layer is separate and what I've done is I've really pulled with the, um, I'll show you, the uh, grab tool. Um, really grabbed and moved stuff to fit into gaps and when this is shown in the render view um, you can see you get these really nice edges which almost feel like they were meant to be together like a liquid almost um, and as you can see i've used that uh, layer tool and just put loads of different pieces in which gives it that really nice cool interesting like fungi look which is uh, obviously the type that we was working on um, okay, so we'll just talk you quickly through how this lighting was set up to if you want to almost replicate this All this is using is a HDRI and I'll drop a link in the description below and I'm using sunset underscore JHB central 4k and you'll be able to find that on the website linked uh, below as well and um, Yeah, that's just set to the strength one and we're in cycles obviously and uh, what else is interesting about this? That's pretty much how we're using for this lighting. We could play with the idea of adding another uh, source of light. So I'm pressing Shift A, go down to Light, go to Area. I'm going to scale it up, press G Z, and I'm going to go to where it says Power. We'll set this to like uh, I don't know. Let's set this to 3000, and we'll change the color to a pink. Don't know how obvious that's gonna that's would help if I'd put it over it higher up. I think 3000 definitely is a, a bit of a push here. We'll go to 1000 and we'll rotate it around and see if we can get anything. But the uh, the HDRI is really strong for this, so there's not much need to add a uh, much more light source uh, in the scene. So, yeah, that's just an option there if you, if you feel like that that could be improve your type. And now it's time to talk through the um, the fisheye lens, uh, which is called. Um, we will select the camera, uh, which is found in this collection, and this is called panoramic. And um, basically, what we're using is a panoramic type. We're using mirror ball, and we have basically just set this camera up on a circle and the circle is animated to rotate. So let's do this now actually. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna press Shift A, we're gonna to go to Mesh and then click Circle. We're gonna press Scale and scale it so it's just outside of your mesh. This will be experimental depending on what size fisheye lens you're using. And then I add a camera and then press seven on the keyboard to go to a top view so I can get a clear view of where this is parented. And then I select the one holding shift, so we've got both selected now. Then I press control P and parent that. So when I rotate this, 
you can see that the cameras, anything that's parented to it, is also rotates with that. So as you can see, I've set a, deep, a pair of keyframes to start in one position, which is here in the render view, it looks like this. And you can set a keyframe over here in the rotation. And then I set an end keyframe, which is on the other side of the type um, right here. So it basically just does that one thing. You can then take that through into After, into After Effects. Maybe you want to keyframe reverse it or you want to make some kind of GIF out of it. But I'll just click play and show you guys what this is looking like. And uh, yeah, it's got a quite a cool retro feel to it. You can kind of interpret this on how you want and you could put this over a graphic piece uh, in which I will be doing, um, which is quite exciting. And uh, yeah, we're going to be working on uh, that on a stream tonight, um, which would be really fun. And uh, yeah, it'd be great to see you subscribing and um, hopefully hang out with us in the stream uh, in the coming weeks because we're now uploading daily uh, to the channel. And uh, yeah, if you've got any video suggestions, please drop them in the comments below. And if you've enjoyed the video, if you could leave a like, that would be amazing. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next video.